welcome to lecture 8 which is on stereo vision and stereoscope. So, we create a stereo vision and we need a device which is called a stereoscope. So, we are going to learn how stereo vision uh, is created by some other techniques also and then uh, how we can use the stereoscopes uh, effectively in order to create a 3D model. So, let us begin this. When we are creating the uh, 3D from 2D images, what different clues in the images provide this 3D information? What are the different clues in the image which can actually give me a 3D effect? There are several. I will show you for example, shading. This is one of the very, very popular method that if we have a 2D image and we want to show a 3D effect in that 2D image, maybe we like to do some kind of a shading effect and this we are using in topographical maps also. Old topographical maps they have the shading effect to sh show which point is higher in that area. The other visual clue is the texture. So, you can see in this diagram here that by giving different textures, we can give some kind of a 3D effect to the 2D image. There are other means also like focus. You know one image is shown blurred and the same image is shown very well focused. So, this gives me you know when I am focusing the tree and blurring the building it gives me depth perception that the tree is much closer to me and the building is far away from me. And when I am showing the other way around, this gives me the idea of the depth perception. So, focusing of the object is also playing very, very important role giving me clue for the depth perception from the 2D image. Sometimes we are using motion, movement to indicate that this is a 3D motion. So, in the 3D motion you can see uh, the statue is doing different activities in all the three. So, this gives me uh, the 3D impact of this particular statue which has been done. Uh, this is a Penham's fusional area volume that is also being used a human vision system is basically capable of fusing the two images, but it is the fusion of several images. Several images are fused, it is called Penham's fusional area and you change your eye angle, you can have some kind of a 3D impact. So, this uh, technique uh, is also quite popular to represent 2D images into the 3D environment by superimposing very large number of images. Then we are using anaglyphs. In anaglyphs, uh, we have two images and uh, we will have uh, basically a red filter and the green filter colored glasses. So, we are using colored glasses, red filter will cancel out the red image component here and the green filter will cancel out the green component and each eye now will see one image. So, when I put the goggles on then my red filter will see one image and the eye with the green filter will see another image and their superimposition will give me some impression of the 3D effect. So, this is the resulting image when I look through these glasses I will get a 3D impact of that and these polarization filters are also quite popular in use to get a 3D impact from the. So, these are the anglef image. So, I have the original image and this is the uh, 3D image. So, I can see a 3D impact if I wear those glasses and try to focus on this particular image. This is another example of Eiffel Tower, my two images and the anglef image where I can see the 
depth perception of this when I look through the then shutter glasses are also available in the market through these shutter glasses you will put it on the shutter glasses and then uh, we help with the help of that we can see 3D model on the screen. This is a very very popular technology in gaming market. So, the photogrammetric techniques for creating a 3D is very popular not only in gaming, but uh, in 3D movies also. So, we are using a similar kind of a concept in 3D movies which are based on the photogrammetric principle, stereo photogrammetric principle. So, here the shutter glasses are also giving us the impression of the 3D. Then it is the auto stereoscopic displays where no glasses are required now. So, you have the lenses they are distorting the pixels left eye will get the left image and the right eye will get the right image and will give you 3D impression. So, this is a very novel method of viewing capability and this is also used nowadays to see a 3D model of the area. So, there are several ways by which we can create a 3D illusion, 3D impact, but when we are talking of a, a kind of a, a photogrammetry, stereo photogrammetry and traditional method, uh, we have uh, stereo photographs. So, stereo photograph of the object. So, here in this diagram there is one photograph which is taken from this camera position, there is another photograph which is taken from the another camera position of these buildings. So, two images are taken from the same object from two different points and now with the help of our traditional photogrammetric techniques use the capability of the stereo image stereo vision we can create a 3D model. So, this is again the stereo image the left photograph and the right photograph of the building which I was showing you in the sketch. If you look at the stereoscopes the instrument which we require to look at those two images distinctly and separately the stereoscope will give me binocular vision two visions and this is stereoscope uh, the old one which is shown in this diagram here it was invented by the English physicist Charles Wheatstone in 1838 long back and if you look at this is handheld. So, you can put it in your hand and there are two lenses here and these two lenses basically are separating your vision. So, Charles Wheatstone also used a pair of mirrors here and they were inclined at 45 degree. So, that you can see the those images together and you can fuse those images by having the separate two views. So, this is the old stereoscopes which was developed uh, for some other purpose not for aerial photogrammetry. Then we have uh, other devices which give me binocular vision. So, you know these are the slides, slides are mounted on a frame and we can actually have the binocular vision through have a biscope or through have some kind of a arrangement where uh, left eye can see one image and the right eye can see the other image. So, two pictures of the same object from two different viewpoints are seen through this bioscope and it gives me a binocular vision and it gives me a sort of a 3D effect. So, these are some of the methods which have been used, but when we are talking of the aerial photograph and we want to carry out the interpretation of those photographs, the measurements from those photographs. So, our prerequisite is that you have to create a stereo vision. So, when you are creating the stereo vision you can extract many information which you cannot actually now extract from the two dimensional image. So, that is the advantage of using those stereo pairs 
Now, the basic principle on which our stereo vision is based, the basic principle is the left eye sees the two dimensional left image and the right eye will see another right image which is two dimensional and fusing these together in the mind and generating the 3D view. So, this is the basic principle two images uh, separated by vision fusing them into mind and creating the 3D model. This is shown actually in the diagram also here. So, we need a, a device as I told you that stereoscopes are required so that we can have binocular vision, we can separate our vision. So, we have to ensure that the 3D view which we are creating through the stereoscopic process uh, is helping us in taking the measurement. So, we use simple equipment such as stereoscopes. There are very costly devices also nowadays, we can create 3D model digitally also, but let us begin with the simple equipment which is still very popular uh, when we are doing that exercise. A stereoscope is the optical device which is used for three dimensional viewing of the landscape or the individual objects. So, there are optics, there are lenses here and we are using the property of the optics to magnify the view, to see the view and uh, have a binocular vision to see the individual objects. So, a stereoscope will view the stereo pair following its principle which I have explained you and each eye will view the respective image and in the overlap region only you will see 3D model. But you have to in order to see that 3D model you have to orient these photographs together. So, this is important the photographs are to be properly oriented in a similar manner as they were taken at the time of the photography. So, we have to learn now that what is the meaning of that you are going to orient those photographs in the same way as they were at the time of the photography. So, if I come back to my previous slide you can see here that the photograph was taken in this direction flight direction photograph number 1 and photograph number 2. So, they have certain orientation when these photographs were taken. So, we have to recreate the similar orientation actually in the laboratory using the instrument. So, we are recreating that in the lab and once we recreate that we can get 3D model and we can take the measurement. So, that process is called orientation of the photograph. So, we have to properly orient these photographs. When we look at the stereoscopes there are actually two types of stereoscopes lens or pocket stereoscope the other type is reflecting or mirror stereoscope. So, let us understand little bit about these stereoscopes uh, how these can be used and what are the different components of that. So, this is a lens stereoscope as the meaning itself is conveying it has two lenses you can see the one lens here and the another lens which are mounted on a metallic frame. So, there is a metallic frame on which they are mounted the distance between the two can be changed. So, you can see here with this arrangement the one arm can go slide into the other arm the distance can be changed. So, this distance can be changed as per our eyesight as I told that 6 to 7 centimeter is the actually consider as the eye base distance. So, this eye base distance may vary from person to person. So, we can actually adjust this distance eye base distance accordingly and also uh, we can unfold this device when they are this is not used. So, this lens stereoscope is also called pocket stereoscope reason is that this is very handy very small lightweight and you can fold the legs. So, you can fold these two legs also when you are not using this instrument 
and keep it in your pocket. So, that is why this is known as a pocket stereo. It is very convenient actually when you are out in the field and you see 3D, uh, you see the 3D terrain in front of you and you want to study the photographs in 3D environment, then this is a very, very handy device you can carry in the field and create a 3D model there itself and try to compare the two together. So, very convenient when uh, you are using a small format aerial photography because you can see very, very limited area at a given time. So, this lens stereoscope or pocket stereoscope is a very, very simple device with two lenses and there are two legs here and these legs are inclined at a certain angle and you have to keep the photograph below the lens stereoscope. So, you can see here the lens stereoscope uh, and you have to lean over it and keep your eye here, keep your another eye on the right lens. So, when you are keeping your, when you are leaning in and keeping your eyes on the left and the right lens, then your vision is separated you will see left photograph only image with the left eye and the right image with the right eye. And in the overlap region now, you try to create, try to fuse those two images, try to create a 3D model. So, this is a, a improved version of the lens stereoscopes. There are many improvements, you know, which have come up in the market. So, this is much, much faster and convenient actually to use. So, lens stereoscope has two plano convex lens and there is a magnifying capability. So, this magnification basically helps us to identify the objects. So, we can have 2 x to 4 x times magnification of the objects. So, I am keeping the photograph, but I see the magnified view when I look at the through the lens. The distance between the lens is adjustable as per your eyesight and you can see a line diagram at the bottom. This is a photograph left, this is a photograph right. So, what is happening is that a ray is traveling to the left eye and the ray is traveling to the right eye and then fusing together and this is the uh, image which is merging together and this is the parallactic angle which is made. So, this way the line diagram follows and you are able to see one single object instead of two distinct and separate objects. Now, second category is the mirror stereoscope. And it has a mirror as the name suggesting. So, it has lenses, it has a mirror and also you know it uh, has a, a better magnifying capability compared to the previous one. So, if you see how the mirror stereoscope lies, there is one reflecting mirror at 45 degree angle and another mirror is here. This is so, there are two mirrors which are tied to the tripod legs of the instrument and you have the vision binocular vision left eye and the right eye. So, you look through this in addition to mirror it has a right angle prism. So, one right angle prism and another right angle prism. So, there are two right angle prisms which are fitted in the instrument. So, now we are using the property of 45 degree mirror reflecting mirror and also we are using the property of the right angle prism. So, we are using the property of the optics keeping the two photographs left photograph and right photograph below it and now try to see the two photographs and superimpose them together. So, the advantage of this mirror stereoscope as compared to the lens stereoscope is that you can cover a large area, you can see a large view of the area, you can see a better magnification of the area. 
but the disadvantage of this is that it is heavy in the field when you are carrying it in the field it is heavier as compared to pocket stereoscope. So, you can provide 3 x to 8 x time magnification very very large area they are in pocket stereoscope you see very limited area because you are very much closer to the photographs. So, you see a limited area and you have to slide those photographs in order to see the entire overlap region, but here in this case probably the entire overlap region you can see in one go and with better magnification. So, that is the advantage of it the disadvantage is heavier to carry in the field. So, very very heavy when you are trying to compare the terrain and creating the 3D model right in the field itself. If you look at the line diagram here this is photograph left this is photograph right the rays are traveling striking to that mirror which is inclined 45 degree and we know the property of 45 degree inclined mirror. So, it will take a 90 degree turn and then we have the prisms. So, it will take 90 degree turn and then these are the two prisms. So, these are the right angle prisms. So, ray will enter into my left eye and the right eye and this is that parallactic angle and fuse and create a 3D model. So, this line diagram is uh, clear from the optics itself and normally now once we create a 3D model we carry out further measurements. So, normally what is done is we use an instrument which we call as the parallax bar instruments. You are going to learn in the next lecture also about this parallax bar how to use it, but if I show you the previous diagram the there is a one instrument which is kept here which is called parallax bar instrument. So, it is normally used along with the parallax bar to take the measurements. So, here you can see that a 3D model is being created with the help of a mirror stereoscope. There are two photographs which are kept and a very very large area can be covered. Now, uh, there are several models which are available in the market with slight modifications so that they are convenient to use and they are much much faster to use with the better magnification. So, different kind of mirror stereoscope devices are available nowadays in the market. This is the kind of a stereo model which can be now created which can be generated. So, once you have uh, a left view and the right view uh, and you are merging them together this is the kind of a model which you can see and now you start feeling the undulations in the terrain. You uh, can identify which are the higher areas and which are the lower areas um, very easily with the help of those stereo model, but we have to quantitatively determine that. So, in order to quantitatively determine what is the value with respect to let us say mean sea level height elevation with respect to mean sea level then we require certain measurements and that is why I told you that um, once we create a 3D model then uh, we use parallax bar we take certain readings and use them to determine the elevation of the various points. So, as I told you earlier also that you have to orient these two photographs you cannot keep them in any way with any angle and so in order to see 3D model. So, in uh, for orienting these photographs uh, to see under mirror stereoscope uh, you have to first of all check that the overlap is kept inward, inward side and not the outward side when you are keeping it below the stereoscope. You have to align the photograph along the direction of the flight line. This is very very important. The photographs were taken suppose left to right. So, same alignment you have to use while you are using the number of photographs together to create a 3D model. So, alignment of the photograph in the direction of the flight line is done with the help of the principal point and conjugate principal point which have been explained in earlier lectures and change the distance between photos until details from both the photos are fused to get a stereo model. 
means that the distance between these two photos you can change you can bring them closer or you can keep them apart till you get one single image when both the images start fusing together that is the distance where you have to fix these photographs. So, that process is known as the orientation of the stereo pair for taking and this is shown here that you have to determine the x axis direction by identifying the conjugate principal point and principal point of the photograph and when you join them together extend that this becomes your direction of the flight line. So, you know the direction of the flight line you know the overlap you can properly orient now the only thing is the distance between these two and this you can do when you are looking at the stereoscope through the stereoscope. There are large number of applications when you create this stereo model you can use for n number of applications. Some are listed over here like you can view for example, the terrain in the 3D environment you can determine the height and depth you can carry out the measurements which we will do in subsequent lectures. You can find out the position orientation what is the shape what is the size of the object. So, all that is possible to create you can create digital elevation model once you know the elevations of the different points you can do that further you can do the volume computation from that data also you know people have done face matching and face recognition for example, you can see in this slide in this diagram you can see that the 3D model of the face has been created using the same photogrammetric principle. So, you can create uh, the masking of the face you can match the face you can recognize the face using photogrammetric techniques and a visualization a new area a new upcoming area where you have to create a 3D model from the 2D because the earth surface is in the 3D environment every day we see in the in the 3D mode. So, we are habituated to see the earth surface in 3D mode. So, this visualization help us to understand the terrain understand the object. So, we can create the visual uh, visual model uh, or 3D model or virtual model in 3D environment. So, these are some of the applications why we are creating the stereo model from uh, uh, the stereo photogrammatic techniques. So, that is I think all I have to cover in this lecture thank you.